This episode of Film Rides brought to you by FreshBooks. Welcome back to the Behind the Scenes of Real Gone. I'm Seth Worley, the writer and director of Real Gone, and today we're gonna to talk about editing, sound mixing, and color grading. I edited the entire film in Adobe Premiere. Working in Premiere is fantastic. I'm able to send footage straight to After Effects and back easily. I was able to work in 5K the entire process using the original R3D files, and I was able to play all of that back seamlessly, not just on my desktop Mac Pro, but on my MacBook Pro as well, which is several years old. Now, there's very little dialogue in the film, but there's, we still shot a lot of wild sound and sound effects on the day. I still had a mic running throughout the shoot, so we'd have that audio from the day to use, and we weren't having to do everything in Foley. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, Seth, you shot on a red epic. How did you get scratch audio? Chris actually has a trick he learned several years ago. I, he calls it Chris's Epic Sound Workaround, which is also the name of his dance workout video. What you do is you take a set of Apple earbuds from an iPhone, plug it into the red epic mic input jack, and uh, it records very low quality scratch audio that's enough for Pluralize to recognize and sync with your other audio. But speaking of sound, my sound mix I did entirely in Premiere. A lot of people might not know the audio track mixer has this great drop down menu. Uh, that allows you to assign filters like compression and EQ and uh, dynamics to actual entire audio tracks. Once I'm nearing the end of my cut, I organize all of my sound elements into specific groups uh, of tracks. I have several tracks that are devoted just to music, several tracks devoted just to dialogue, and several tracks devoted just to sound effects, and a couple tracks devoted to wild sound or atmospheres or ambient, ambient sound. So then I can actually go in the audio track mixer and assign compression and EQs to these entire tracks and levels uh, and not be working with each individual clip in the timeline. It's very, very helpful and very cool. I'm able to work with more of a bird's eye view on all of my audio, and I'm also able to be very specific about how I mix my dialogue and sound effects as opposed to how I mix my music. Speaking of music, we had some fantastic music in this film. I built a light in the sinking sand. The majority of it is original score composed by my brother Ben. A lot of it is actually uh, from Music Bed. From the very beginning, I knew I, I wanted to try a lot of new things on this project, and one of those things was I wanted to actually bring in some lyrical songs, uh, which I don't do very often in many of my films. The best place online to find stuff like this is on Music Bed. Those Music Bed tracks are featured in the Heaven scene. They're featured in the sequence starting where Darren is writing the letter and going into the garage sequence. And the third one is in the end credits. Fantastic song, it's super dark and angry, love it. And the rest of the music in the film, which makes up the majority of the film, uh, was original score composed by my brother Ben Worley. On every film that we work together, Ben usually reads the script ahead of time, and then he composes a theme, more of a demo of a theme, uh, ahead of time for me to have uh, working through most of pre-production and production. Then I have an idea of what the music's going to sound like and I'm able to make a lot of creative decisions influenced by that. Very helpful to get started with your composer as early as possible uh, and treat them as a collaborator, not just, you know, someone delivering you a service. And one thing that Ben and I relearn on every film is how important it is to pay attention to the big picture of the film. You can score one scene perfectly and another scene perfectly, but then you could step back and watch the whole project and they don't work together, they're not cohesive, they don't work together. It's always important to constantly be keeping in mind the big picture of the film. Speaking of big picture, color grade. Now I don't have time to talk about the importance and significance of color grading and how it will impact your film and in some ways define the look and feel of your film. And it's interesting, even in the past few years, the role of the colorist has kind of evolved into a totally different, bigger thing. A lot of color graders are doing sky replacements, in a way, lighting your scenes. And this is not to take away from the importance of what the director of photography does on set, but nowadays, uh, a colorist can go in and completely change the look of your film. Ryan and I both love Magic Bullet Suite, which includes Magic Bullet Looks, Colorista, Mojo, Cosmo, Magic Bullet Film, an insanely awesome set of tools uh, for color grading that continues to get more powerful with every release. What's very common in color grading these days is actually rotoscoping and power windows uh, where you literally can isolate areas of the shot, brighten them up, darken them. A lot of Mad Max Fury Road focused on upping the contrast just in eyes and sharpening eyes. That's why people's eyes in that film pop tremendously. I usually like to work exclusively in Magic Bullet looks. And I actually don't have any explanation for why I didn't on this film. I just tried something different. Magic Bullet has a new plugin called Magic Bullet Film, which emulates the look of real film stocks. Since I work at Red Giant, I know for a fact that Stu Mashowitz and his team did an extensive amount of research uh, and shooting actual film stocks in building this plugin, which is why it has such great results. So while my approach is probably totally wrong, this is how I did it. When I was color grading any shot, I dropped Magic Bullet Film on first. 
uh, and I tried to keep the same film stocks over all of the film. And then if any areas in the shot, like Darren's face, needed some brightening or adjustments, I would bring in Colorista 3, then use Premiere's built-in mask and tracking tools to create power windows around the areas that I needed to adjust, such as Darren's face or Darren's eyes. Then I was able to apply Colorista just to that specific spot in the image. I did a lot of brightening of Darren's face. I did a lot of uh, pulling down some of the brighter distracting areas in the background or on the edges of frame. But I was very intentional about staying in communication with Chris throughout the entire process, getting his approval and input on all the shots, because I knew he made decisions for a reason on the set. Even the raw footage looked amazing because of the work that he did. And I want to make sure that not only that I didn't ruin it, but that I was enhancing it in a way that he would want. Damn. FreshBooks makes things simple, but their specialty is to make your life easier when it comes to invoicing, getting paid, and tracking expenses. If you're doing any freelance work or have a business of any kind, on the side or full time, you need to know about FreshBooks. It's an online tool and the absolute easiest way to get all your accounting done super fast. Everyone dreads doing stuff like sending invoices and getting your numbers straight, but that's where FreshBooks makes it really simple. Your clients can pay you online, your expenses are tracked as you spend, with all the little details about cash flow in one place so you always know where you stand. You can even see the full history of any invoice so you'll know if your client has looked at your invoice or not. So head over to freshbooks.com slash filmwrite and don't forget to enter filmwrite in the how do you hear about us section. And that I believe brings us to the end of my month of Film Riot Epic Summer. This has been such a freaking blast. I love Film Riot. I'm honored to be a part of it. I love all of you guys. You can always find me on Twitter. You can find me alone in my office weeping quietly. Thank you guys for letting me make this short film and show you how I did it. I hope you've learned something. Seriously, reach out. I'm here and uh, I love you. All of you. And now it's Andrew Kramer's turn to die. Oh, but don't forget, the Real Gone Digital Download Pack is available in the Triune store. You want it, go get it. I'm just going to buy it again. I keep buying it.